Good morning, AHS, and welcome to AHS News. I'm Alyssa. And I'm Sam. Today is Monday, March 4th. Today's Faces in the Crowd features Smeet Patel. I'm Anish and I'm a... Smeet Patel. What are your thoughts on Smeet? Uh, really, he's a good guy. I love him so much. He's one of my best friends. You know, he's just that guy. He'd be chill. What about you? He's very intelligent and motivational. In, in multiple ways, he can be pretty inspiring. All his personality, his character, the way he impacts his community. But um, just the way he is. The uh, Smee Patel is one of the nicest students I've ever met. He's really fun to uh, play basketball with, and he's always got a smile on his face, always cheering up everyone around him. Talk to us about some contributions at AHS. Oh, I've been the Eagle a couple of times, let's say one or two times, and then been a positive person. Positive Making person. people happy, making them smile, helping them, just the best you can do as a person. Uh, do you think Smeet has the potential to become an actor? I think um, with enough like hard work and uh, you know perseverance, I think anyone can really achieve any of their dreams. So especially Smee, he seems pretty charismatic. I feel if he puts the work in, he could definitely become an actor. He has the perfect personality for it. A Smee would be a great actor. Um, he's shown me some of the uh, Bollywood videos that he likes to, sh to show everyone. Um, but wherever he wants to go, Hollywood, Bollywood, wherever he wants to go, I think he would be successful. Oh, yeah. Do you think when you're older you'll reach heights like uh, popular actor Shah Rukh Khan? Shah Rukh Khan, oof. I love Shah Rukh Khan. My favorite of all time is Salman Khan. Um, yeah, hopefully if I get into acting, which I'm pretty good at it, so hopefully Bollywood. With the Drama Guild taking on this year's Drama Fest, let's see what they're doing in preparation. Every year, the AHS Drama Guild participates in the Massachusetts High School Drama Festival, also known as Fest. Let's hear from some of the people that made it happen this year. What is the title of the play? And please tell us a little bit about the plot. So the title of the play is Into the Sun with Certainty. And the plot um, is about a girl and she's trapped in her bedroom after dealing with a really traumatic event. Um, and so she sort of slips into this depression. Um, and it's ba basically the people in her life that come to visit her while she's sort of stuck in her room. What role do you play in the play? Um, they don't have a name. It's just called the girl, but it's the main character. I think that this character, like some of like the themes of like depression stuff is pretty relatable for a lot of people, but um, yeah, it's pretty intense. And could you tell us about your favorite scene? Um, my favorite scene is probably my, the scene with my friend Sydney. She plays my younger sister because it's just really fun and we have a couple like really happy moments in a kind of like serious play. Let's wish our Drama Guild luck as they made it past the preliminary rounds this past Saturday, March 2nd, and are on their way to the semifinals on March 9th. AHS students gathered in the Collins Center prior to vacation to experience the art of dance. Who am I here with today? This is Mr. McCarthy. I was just wondering how your experience was at the Haitian dance and what exactly like was it? So it was a great experience. We had um, most of the sophomore class see a performance by the Jean Apollon Company and a performance entitled Traca to deal with the impact of trauma in dealing with it on a, a more physical level. Would you do this again? I would absolutely do it again. We have a really good partnership with them and we're looking forward to them coming next year. Okay, thank you. Okay, who am I here with? Malik Maliani. Ryan. Tarek. Luca. And I know you guys all went to the Haitian dance. Can you talk about it a little bit? Uh, it was a fun experience. Something new. It's kind of cool to see like different people expressing their emotions with dances. That's good. Would you guys go again? Uh, I would, personally. Yeah, probably. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, definitely would. Who am I here with? Jacob. And I know you went to the school's Haitian dance. How was it? Uh, it was good. I went with my friends. Oh, that's good. Would you ever go again? Yeah. Okay, who am I here with? Liv. And I heard you went to the Haitian dance. How did you like it? Yeah. It was good. Do you have any takeaways from it? Um, yeah, it was nice to learn like about a new culture. It was very like interesting to watch.
award-winning and New York Times best-selling author Angeline Bowley and will be visiting Andover High School on March 12, 2024. This author event has been generously funded by the Cummings Foundation. As a biracial, unenrolled tribal member and the product of a scandal, Donna Fontaine has never quite fit in, both in her hometown and on the nearby Ojibwe Reservation. When her family is struck by tragedy, Donis puts her life on hold to take care of her fragile mother. The only bright spot is meeting Jamie, the charming new hockey recruit on her brother's hockey team. After Donis witnesses a shocking murder that thrusts her into criminal investigation, she agrees to go undercover. But the deceptions and the deaths keep piling up and soon the strikes too close to home. How far will she go to protect her community if it means tearing the, apart the world she's only ever known? Her books, Firekeeper's Daughter and Warrior Girl Unearthed, have won multiple awards and included on a range of recommended reading lists for young adults. On the day of her visit, Mrs. Bowley will give a large group presentation in the Collins Center, followed by a book signing. Anyone interested in purchasing books can do so by ordering ahead of the event. Books will also be on sale that day by the Andover Bookstore. After a 14-7 record in the regular season, the girls' basketball team earned a bye in the first round of the playoffs and beat Franklin 45-43 to in the second round. I think one of the biggest parts of leading the team this season would be the communication piece on my part. Um, we have a lot of younger kids in the program, so kind of communicating the place and everything to them would be a big part of leadership, I think. And how was your regular season? I think it went pretty well. I think we were... 13 and 7 maybe, which is not as good as last year obviously, but I think that given like when Michaela got hurt and everything, I think given the circumstances we had, we did pretty good. We've had a lot of good practices lately and we have a lot of preparation that we've been doing to beat Franklin tonight. How has your regular season been? Our regular season has been pretty good. Um, so far we've just been practicing a lot, um, going over film and uh, scouting the other team. Mm -hmm. And how do you feel um, for your game today? Uh, I feel really good. I feel like we've been preparing really well for it, so mm -hmm. it should be a good game. Thank you. How did you feel about your game last night in round one of the playoffs? Well, I thought Franklin was a really good opponent. They came out um, really well. We were, we were down um, double digits, and we got nine points at the end of the second quarter at halftime. We were down nine points going into the third quarter, and we kept trusting and believing. And we made great comeback to end up winning by two points, 45-43. The Varsity Boys basketball team played their first playoff game Friday night. Let's take a look at their season's highlights. Who am I here with today? Uh, Danny Resendez. Connor LeBron. Connor, can you tell me what game you think was the most memorable this season and why? Uh, definitely the uh, NA game. It was a big win over a team that we weren't supposed to beat, so I was very happy about that. Good. And then, Danny, can you tell me what player you thought stood out most this season? Uh, definitely our little freshman Josh Rue. Uh, kids, he's got a lot of heart. You know, to be 14 years old to come out and play like that is unreal. All right, thank you. Who am I here with? Will Tutwiler. All right, well, how was your season this year and what was your most memorable game? Our season went really well. Uh, we went 15 and 5 and finished 8th in the state. And I'd say our most memorable game was probably our home win against North Andover because they came in uh, as like one of the best teams in the state. And um, we, it was like a really big battle and we ended up coming out with the W. Okay. What has your team done in preparation going into the playoffs? Yeah, we've practiced pretty much every day uh, since our last game. And um, we've just done a lot of game planning for Marshfield specifically and like knowing their players to get ready for tonight. All right, good. <laughs> the wrestling team had a successful season, sending two students to the New England Wrestling Championship. Who am I here with? Uh, Nicholas Archambeau. What emotions are, are you feeling now that the wrestling season is over? Um, I had a good season this year, but it's definitely bittersweet because it was my last year wrestling, and I've been wrestling since second grade, so 10 years now. What was your favorite memory over the course of the four years here? Going to nationals with uh, my teammate Yondell um, my sophomore year, that was exciting, and then hitting 100 wins and just being on the, on the team with my brother. So, yeah. Who, who am I here with? Ian Del Morales. How are you feeling heading into the New England tournament and the national tournament? 
Uh, pretty good, you know. Just been working all year for this, so I got robbed last year, losing an OT, but you know, this year we'll come back strong and win it. And what goals do you want to accomplish before you graduate? Um, stop losing and, you know, go D1. As the winter sports season comes to a close, let's take a look at one of the teams whose season has just finished. They're one of the most elusive sports at Andover High, often leading a school over a period before it ends. But who are they, and what are they like? This is the AHS ski team. Uh, my favorite part of ski team has probably been the bus rides, you know, just like having some fun with my friends, we get to talk. Yeah, it's been fun. And my favorite anything? part, the um, athletes are the favorite part. My favorite, part. my favorite part of the season? Oh, I don't know, the snack table at the end of every race. That's uh, it's always my, uh, what I look forward to at the end of a race. So, By far, the biggest rival of Andover skiing is that of the infamous St. John's Prep. Thoughts on St. John's? Uh, I don't even think they're worth any thoughts. Screw St. John's, man. They should not be in the conference with us. For those looking to join the team, here are some tips. Uh, dude, just come out, try out, work hard, don't give up. Um, don't stress about it. I, it's gonna seem scary looking up at the hill, looking at the course. Take it step by step, ask questions. All, everybody on your team is gonna be happy to help you. Like, um, yeah. ski fast. <laughs> yeah, just, yeah, you wanna, you have to love it and uh, come out. Come out, you'll have a great time. Let's see what HS students would do for $10. Who am I here with today? This is Liam Devine. And for a chance to win $10, could you make a funny slash silly face to the camera for us? What the hell? You're getting no money. Who am I here with today? Harrison Bellman. So for a chance to win $10, could you make a funny slash silly face into the camera? That's it. We good? All right. So who am I here with today? Uh, Jack Ioko. So for a chance to win $10, could you make a funny slash silly face into the camera for us? Uh, uh. So who am I here with today? Eli Berman. All right, so for a chance to win $10, can you do a funny slash silly face for me? <laughs> Yo, who am I here with today? William Fairball. So today, for a chance to win $10, could you make a funny slash silly face into the camera? Yo, I'm not gonna lie, bro, you're getting no money. That, that was for my bane, Will Norris. You're getting no money, bro. With March Madness coming up later this month, we tested the ball knowledge of a few of our teachers and students at AHS. Alright, so which team has won the most national championships? Um, I think I think it's UCLA. For men's basketball or women's basketball? Men's, men's basketball. Uh, UCLA. I'm going to have to go with UNC. LSU? Nope. I don't know. UCLA, they have 11. Alright, so next question. Which player has won the most natties? There's two of them. Um... Is it Christian Leitner? Of most national championships. Current active NBA players or? All time. All time. Um, Bill Walton? Grayson Allen? That's a good one. Do you know the schools? Can you give me a hit? Uh, one of them's UCLA. One of them is UCLA. Bill Walton went to UCLA. Uh, I, I have no idea. Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, Want to give up or keep going? Um, I'll give up. Nope. Yeah, I have no clue. Uh -oh. <laughs> I don't know how he plays. Take a guess. LeBron James. LeBron did not go to college. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Don't know. The answers are Kareem Abdul-Jabbar and Henry Bibby. They both played for UCLA. That's all we have for this week. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next H1 on March 15th.